Hi, I'm Tim Tyler, and this is a video about universal selection, which is the idea that natural selection applies to everything that exists, irrespective of whether or not it's alive. Most people are familiar with the idea of natural selection. Some things survive better than others, and the world which observers witness is populated by the things that are good at surviving. This idea is sometimes known as survival of the fittest. However, many people associate this idea with life and with living systems. What is less commonly understood is that the principle of natural selection is a broad and deep one which also applies to systems which are not alive. Natural selection affects everything that comes into existence. Whether it comes into existence via a copying process or not is irrelevant. For example, when you see pebbles on a beach, the ones that you see will mostly be hard ones which are made of materials which are difficult to erode. And this is because softer and more fragile stones have been pounded into sand and have sunk to the bottom. Also, clouds often appear to be white, light and fluffy, because natural selection has already dragged any heavy water droplets out of them, and fine water vapour particles are usually all that is left. The principle is not by any means confined to biological systems. Its effects can be seen in action everywhere. So, when observers look at the sky, they see the stars that are shining, and not the ones that have burned out or exploded. The elementary particles that are observed in the universe tend to be the stable ones, the ones with long half-lives. The tops of mountains tend to get covered in hard rocks that resist erosion, since any soft rocks there tend to get washed away. The meteorites, comets and satellites that are observed in orbit are the ones which have not yet crashed into any planets. I'm not aware of an existing term for this whole idea, so I think it needs christening. I think the most obvious terms for the idea are pan-selectionism and universal selection. However, both terms are currently being used in other contexts. So pan-selectionism is used as a derogatory term, which means more or less the same thing as pan-adaptationism, which is a term that's used to refer to the idea that evolution is driven almost exclusively by natural selection, and that all the features of organisms have an adaptive explanation. Universal selection, on the other hand, has been used mainly to refer to the ideas about cultural evolution in Gary Seco's book, Without Miracles. I think that universal selection is the best term for the idea. I think that this idea has a better claim on the title than is represented by the ideas in Without Miracles, so I think the best thing to do is to simply adopt usage of the term. The term selection has been criticised for falsely implying a selector, or a selecting agent, and for falsely implying a choice between discrete and disjoint alternatives. Filtering or sorting would more prob probably be a more accurate literal description of what happens to the persistent patterns in the world, although even those terms are not quite right. However, the term selection is already used ubiquitously in this context, so my current assessment is that fighting against that terminology is a battle that was lost some time ago. The idea of universal selection can be classified as belonging with other ideas about self-organising systems, and that's an area which is associated with maths and physics. If evolution can be thought of as consisting of reproduction, variation and selection, then only reproduction is really confined to living systems. Both variation and selection occur in non-living ones. That means that we can expect to see some Darwinian dynamics in non-living systems. And indeed, that is what we see. Many self-organising systems that are not alive nonetheless exhibit some of the qualities normally associated with living systems, such as the ability to maintain homeostasis in the fate of environmental perturbances. And universal selection is one of the reasons why we see this kind of thing happening. Self-organising systems is an area which is currently underrepresented in the educational system, and universal sele selection is a poorly recognised concept in that field. And as a result of these factors, many people are not aware of the idea. And natural selection is currently taught in biology classes. It should probably be taught in physics classes. It's a fairly basic principle, broadly similar to the ideas of thermodynamics. Natural selection in biology is best understood as a special case of this much more general and fundamental principle. Um, enjoy!